Not long ago, I reviewed the Brynight HC01 headlamp, and I was really very impressed. Well, based on that review, when Brynight offered to send me the HL18 flashlight, I accepted. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I do want to thank Brynight for sending out the HL18 flashlight so that I could share it with you. So, you know, prior to receiving the headlamp, I had not heard of this company before, but I think it's a company that you're going to hear a lot more about because I've been very impressed with the products that they've sent me so far. All right, so what we'll do, as always, is go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features, the physical and performance specifications for this light, as well as its modes of operation. Then we'll get it outside and do some demonstrations. Just before we focus in on the light itself, let me share with you what I came with. This is the box the light arrived in. This is the manual with warranty information. There are a pair of spare O-rings. There is a head lamps headlamp strap and mount that you can convert it and I'll demonstrate how that works in a few moments time and a charging cable but I want to point out it's not your typical USB type C charging cable it is a proprietary magnetic cable and I'll demonstrate how that works in a moment let's bring the flashlight back in two more things that have included one is a 3100 milliamp hour 18650 lithium ion rechargeable battery and this two-way pocket clip which can not only be mounted as it is here but can be flipped and mounted up here for your choice of how you wanted to use it now it does have a few unique key features and one that stands out of course is the rotating head on top which can be angled to 90 degrees boy that is really come in quite useful useful uh, and I'll talk about that in a few moment time. It does have a magnetic base and combined with that rotating head I've used this quite a bit for a lot of around the home repairs. All right now as far as physical specifications go the overall length is an exact five inches or 127.5 millimeters. The diameter at its widest is 1.1 inch or 27.5 millimeters. Weight with the battery installed is 4.9 ounces, 138 grams. It is waterproof to an IP66 rating and it has an impact resistance of 1.5 meters. As far as the performance specifications go for the HL18, it has a turbo of 1600 lumens, but that's only going to last for one minute before the heat protection circuitry knocks it down to 420 minutes, but that's going to last another two hours and five minutes. Now it has a high setting of 620 lumens, lasting for three hours and five minutes. It has a medium setting of 150 lumens, which will last for eight hours and 30 minutes. It has a low of 50 lumens, which will last for 25 hours. And it has a moonlight of 10 lumens, lasting for 120 hours. Now it does also have a strobe coming out at 1600 lumens and an SOS coming out at 300 lumens. Just before we go into the operation of the HL18, I thought I'd give you a few close-ups and show you some details for its key features. So the key feature that stands out the most for this light is the head itself, the fact that it rotates. Actually, I think angles is a better way of saying it. You can see it does have a three or four settings down to 90 degrees different looking but this is truly a great advantage on that light especially when you combine it with the magnetic tail cap this allows me to get it in places and shine the light exactly where i need to where it otherwise would be awkward with a lot of other lights probably one of my favorite use uh, lights to use around the house for doing tasks like that now speaking of the headlamp or the head itself as you can see it is a deep and polished reflector leading to quite a bit of a centralized uh, head a spotlight if you will but there is still some spillage or flood around the outside. Attractive blue anodization around the edge and that's carried over to the on off button which of course is quite easy to find. That's a feature I look for in lights now is how easy is it to you for you to find the on off button without looking at the light and this one is quite easy. Now the only place you're going to confuse it with maybe is the charging port but very quickly you you get that tactile feel for which one is which and there you go. It's easy. It drops into my hand pretty much the same every time. Now as far as the charging port goes itself let me give you a close-up of this and then I'll bring the cable in itself so you can see that the cable has a small protrusion in the center between the magnet and that 
protrusion, they lock on and you're ready to charge the light. Last thing I'll show you is the two-way pocket clip. I have it mounted here at the back of the light, but I can take it off, turn it around, and mount it at the front of the light as well. That gives you quite a few options for carry as also. Last thing I can show you, of course, when I speak of mounting, is the headlamp strap and mount. So they did come separate, easy enough to th feed or thread that onto the strap. By the way, the strap is got quite a bit of stretch, but it also has quite a bit of adjustment, which means it's comfortable even on my XL size head, but also I can wear this around a toque or a beanie and still have enough strap. I think that's nice. Not every light comes out like that. Now to install this, you can see the magnet working on the cable. Uh, to install the light, decide which way you want the on-off button to go. For me, I like it to have be facing up and to the right, and then I can just click it into the mount. There we go. Now, in order to use it, just rotate the head forward, and now the whole mount moves into the position you want it. So a lot of variations there. And then, of course, I have my on-off button setting on top. Let me remove it from the headlight mount, and let's go into the operation of the light. Now, simple operation, very intuitive, very much like all a number of other flashlights. I really like that. There's no special sequence of buttons to push to get this on and off. It's a simple on and off, just like that. Now, if I want to go directly to Moonlight, I do so by a long press of the button. There you are, Moonlight at 10 lumens, and off again. It does have memory for whatever it was before that, so that's nice to know as well. Now, to get it to go to Turbo, I double press the button, either with the light on or off. There's Turbo. You can see the camera compensating for the 1600 lumens. If I want to go directly to SOS or the strobe, it's a triple press. I won't do that to bring the strobe on. Now, one more thing I can mention about the on-off button. If I want to lock this against unintentionally turning it on, then it's just five presses in a row, and that will lock it. Another five presses in a row will unlock it. All right, let's start the Brunite HL18 off on medium. And good amount of light. I mean, it's not casting it a long ways. It's doing most of my backyard. Not a high level, just the same, but it's not bad. We'll take it up to the next level. That's high. Now that's significant amount of light, certainly lighting up my backyard, the neighbor's backyard. Not really going on beyond, beyond it though. And there we go, turbo. That's for a small, compact, versatile light like this. That is really putting out a lot of performance. A few closing thoughts for the Brynight HL18 flashlight. So the, what I really like about this light right off of the top, it is the fact that you can angle this head down to 90 degrees, especially when you combine it with the magnetic tail cap on this. This really allows it to be a very effective, very versatile, small EDC or work light. I really like it for those reasons. The two-way pocket clip, nice. It's not something I use a whole lot of, but it's nice to be able to take it off and mount it in different ways as well. Well, I like the beam cast that that provides. It's a nice focused beam cast, if you will, cast so quite a long ways, but still has enough spill or flood around the outside. Now, those are the things I really like about it. There's one thing I'm not too crazy about, and that is the proprietary charging port on the side, the magnetic charging port. The reason I'm not a fan of those is, well, if I lose my cable, then I have to remove the battery from the light and put it in some type of a battery charger. I just find that, uh, you know what, why not just stay with the tried and true, the more common USB type C charging ports. Now, it's not the end of the world. We can always charge our batteries like we did before they had charging ports on the side, but it just would be nice if this had that charging port. Now, more often than not, when a company adds this type of a charging port to a flashlight, it is to help keep its waterproofness. So they tend to be a lot more waterproof than a USB type C, which has to have the little rubber thing lifted before you can put the cable in. Well, I don't know that it added that value to this light. I mean, it comes in an IP66 waterproof, dustproof rating, so it didn't achieve IP68, the higher rating that you might look for in a flashlight like this. So again, I don't see the advantage to having that on this light. But again, not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of. Okay, that's all I have to share with you on the Brynight HL18 flashlight. I'll be putting all the specifications in the video description as well as the links to where you can take another look at this light. If you have any comments or any questions about the light, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.